So today I'll be talking about the Pixel 4a versus the Pixel 5 and technically my first impressions of the Pixel 5 since I had it for a couple of days now. And if you want to see more um, Pixel 5 content, make sure to subscribe. Before I dive in, I want to give you my quick thoughts on the Pixel 4 last year's edition versus the Pixel 5. And I think the Pixel 5 actually fixed the main problem and that's the battery life. I got the XO version so the battery life wasn't too bad at all. but. If I were to pick, I would still pick the smaller form factor. Now it has the Soli sensor, which wasn't a really big thing for me. I used it once and I never really use it again. So that's something that I won't miss at all. Now, one thing I will miss is the face unlock, which gave me the best experience on any Android phone. I know right now during these times, it's just much more convenient using the fingerprint sensor. So with a couple of days of using the Pixel 5, it's a no brainer for me to pick the 5 over the 4. The only big con for me is the slower processor, which for me, I think for Pixel users, it's more than enough with this mid-range processor. So if you are a heavy smartphone user or you need power, then I would probably just stick with the Pixel 4 or go with something else. Anyways, let's move on to the hardware. And I wanna say I really love the finish on a Pixel 5. It has been a very long time where I actually want to use a phone without a case. I wanna say it feels like those arts and crafts construction paper, but a metal version of that. I would pick this material over the shiny, glossy glass backs on a lot of phones out there. But most likely, a lot of people would put a case on their phones. In terms of the form factor, they are about the same. The Pixel 5 is just slightly thicker in the hands, but even though if you do have smaller hands, it's still gonna be comfortable. The screen is slightly bigger and you can barely tell. On a day-to-day -day difference, you can't really see from a point two difference, so it doesn't really matter. Other than the better hardware quality, the form factor is exactly the same. Now for performance, on paper, the Pixel 5 does have the better chip, but honestly, while using Instagram, messaging friends, or even watching YouTube videos, the Pixel 5 doesn't feel faster. For most people, they will probably not feel a big difference. Maybe down the road a year later, the Pixel 4a will probably start to feel sluggish, but as of right now, if you're getting these two phones currently, they will both feel just fine. If you do need the performance and you love using the Pixel, then I would say go for the Pixel 4, but because of the crappy battery life, that phone will not last you throughout the day. Now moving on to the battery life, the Pixel 5 does have the bigger battery, so of course that's gonna win. Now it really depends on how you use the phone. Lately, I've been indoors more, so I would say they would last me at least a day and a half, but for the Pixel 5, I think I can push it up to two days. If you wanna squeeze a bit more battery life out of the 5, I would say turn off smooth display, which is basically turning off the 90 hertz screen. And that's something that helped me when I had the Pixel 4. I know that 90 hertz does have the sharper display when you're scrolling and stuff, but honestly, I don't see a huge difference. And for most people, I think that they won't see a big difference as well. So for me, I would say it would be worth it to turn that off. Pixel 5 also has wireless charging and reverse wireless charging. So if you are a fan of that, or if you do depend on that every day, then that's gonna be a huge plus to you as well. Now for software, the Google UI is very simple and easy to use. If you're coming from an iPhone, then most likely this would be mo more inviting than other Android phones. And I always tell my friends that the Pixel phones are basically the iPhones of Androids. When you're taking a picture on the 4A, it will tell you to try out night sight when it's too dark. And once you press that, it will go straight into the night sight mode. But if you do ignore it, you can exit out. And after you take a picture, it doesn't really come back until you manually switch back to night sight if you want to use night mode. On a Pixel 5, it's so much more easier. It's automatic, so you can tell by seeing the moon shape on your shutter button. And you can easily turn it off if you don't want it on the side, which the icon is right there. But if it doesn't need it, it won't show up. Also, it does apply to portrait mode as well, so that is a new feature on the Pixel 5. So this is the front-facing test of the Pixel 4a and the Pixel 5. One new thing about the Pixel 5 is it does have an ultra-wide angle lens, which is something that I've been waiting for a long time. Last year with the Pixel 4, it does have a telephoto lens, which is something I barely use. So I would say this is going to be a huge plus for the Pixel 5. All right, let's move on to the portrait mode test. And side by side, they look so identical, I can't tell which one is better. If there are some inconsistencies, I would say that that's more on the software side of things and not hardware. So if you do show me a blind comparison test with these two phones, honestly, I would think that they would be taken from the same phone because they're so identical. And that goes for the same with the basic pictures. The only difference here is that you do get the ultra wide angle lens on the Pixel 5, which is more handy and it still looks very good. So with a couple of days using the camera and after like what, a month of using the Pixel 4a, the camera quality looks very identical. It's basically the same. So you're not really paying more for the better quality camera, you're just really paying more for another camera, which is the ultra wide angle lens. Now for next light, there is a small difference. I would say the biggest one that stands out is the color. Also, it does seem like the Pixel 5 can see a bit better in the dark just by hair, but it still does, doesn't look that great. It's still blotchy and it has a lot of artifacts. 
but after using night mode, the picture does clean up a bit more, even though you can still see some artifacts and noise. And another advantage of using the Pixel 5, you can use night mode on the ultra wide angle lens. For video in 4K30, they look exactly the same. The stabilization while I'm panning around, how it does get that floaty look, it, everything just looks the same, so really identical on 4K30. Now you can use the ultra wide angle lens to record video, and of course, it's very useful when you're in tight spaces or you just want to capture the whole thing. Finally, the Pixel 5 can shoot up to 4K60, and what I've noticed is when I'm panning around, it's a bit jerky, it's not as smooth as 4K30. And you don't have access to the ultra wide angle lens, you can only do it in 4K30. In low light, in really dark areas, it seems like the Pixel 5 does have the better deeper blacks, whereas on the Pixel 4a, it looks more or shifts more towards the bluish purple side. So in the end, is it worth paying twice as much for the Pixel 5 versus the 4a? To me, I do like Pixel phones, so therefore, I'm gonna say yes. But if you don't really care about the feel of the material, water resistance, while it's charging, the ultra wide angle lens, then most likely you will be happy with the regular Pixel 4a. The Pixel 4a does give you the main Pixel experience for a really affordable price, and also you're not really missing out on the quality of the camera. I would say getting the Pixel 4a for that $350 price tag, I think that you're getting more than what you're paying for. So should you upgrade if you have the Pixel 4? Um, I would say that if you can't stand the battery life, if you really don't need the full processing power, and if you don't mind going back to using the fingerprint sensor, then I would say go for it. Ultra wide angle lens will be a really great new experience for you. And because it's a Pixel phone, it's really meant for taking pictures as well. So it's really a big factor to consider. So those are my thoughts on the Pixel 5 and the Pixel 4a. If you do want more Pixel 5 content, please hit the subscribe button and hit the bell. You can find me on Instagram. And if you do like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.